Welcome back. I'm Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we are talking about how to make this easy 3D title with just the built-in tools in Fusion. I'm gonna assume you know a little bit about how Fusion works, but we'll go over some of the basics too. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. First thing we're gonna do is make a new Fusion composition. I'll go up here to our media pool, right click and say new Fusion composition. It's gonna ask me things about it. Let's do 3D title two, cause I already made the other one. It's That's how, Reality works. And here we are, 3D Title 2. I'll double click on that and it'll open up magically in the Fusion page. Because this is a new composition, we don't have a media in or anything, so we need to make something. We need to do something. So let's start with the background. Easy way to make a background is just to grab this icon right here on the left, drag it down to our flow, and we'll take the output of our background and put it into our media out. This will do a couple things. This will set our composition size and it'll give us a black background. So we don't want a black background. Let's do something a little bit more fancy. Let's go up to the inspector with the background node selected and here where it says type, instead of solid color, let's go to four corner, four corner. And we're gonna make kind of a tealish background here. And this is a little trick that I like to use just to make a nice little soft, interesting background. This top left color, let's make this kind of a bright cyan. So something kind of like, something kind of like this. And the bottom right, let's make the same color. I'll just grab this eyedropper and we'll just put it sort of here, something like that. And now we have the dark corners and the light corners and these dark corners, let's say top right, let's do kind of a tealish looking thing, something like that, but a little bit darker than our other corners were. Hit okay. And see, that's looking nice. And bottom left is gonna be about the same color. Just grab and pick that, ooh, see? You see what we're doing here? It looks cool. All right, so we have our background. Now let's worry about the 3D text. If you're unfamiliar with how 3D works inside of Fusion, you need at least two different nodes. One is something that's 3D and the other one is a 3D renderer. If we're gonna make something that's 3D, let's grab our text, which in the right hand side of this toolbar, we have all our 3D stuff. These first three icons are things that you make in 3Ds, things like meshes, text, plane, stuff like that. We'll grab this text 3D and drag it down into the flow. And then this last one is renderer 3D. So let's put that there and connect text to the renderer 3D. Text 3D has one job. All it does is make 3D text. And the renderer 3D has one job. All it does is take whatever you connect to it that's 3D and render a 2D image so that we can actually composite it over stuff. Think of this as the actual stuff and this is like taking a picture of it. So let's take this down here and we're gonna take the renderer 3D and merge it over our background just by dragging the output onto the output of the background. There we have our merge and ta-da, nothing's happened, yay. That's because our text 3D here, we haven't actually given any text. So right now it's like not ideal. So let's say we're gonna make this show about dogs. <laughs> I love making stuff about dogs. We'll just type in dogs so we have something to type here. Font, for 3D text, I like to pick a big thick font. I'm gonna pick a font called Mont Heavy. It says it's a demo, but the the license says that it's fine to use, so I, I don't know. Maybe they just didn't take demo out of it. If anybody knows, let me know. So that text is looking sick other than it's not 3D at all. So how do we fix that? You scroll down to the bottom of the inspector when you have a text 3D selected. We have this section called extrusion. We can twirl that down. And now if we take this extrusion depth here and we push it up, look what happens to our text. Ooh, it does something weird, but you can kind of imagine that it's sort of getting 3D, although you can't tell it all. And why is that? Well, the thing about 3D is you really need to have lighting for it to make any sense. And by default, Fusion doesn't really have lighting enabled. So a couple things we need to do. First one is go down to our render of 3D, select that, and on the inspector here, enable lighting and shadows. And so we have sort of the opposite problem. Instead of it being bright white, it's dark black and it still looks just as bad, but it's the first step in progress towards actually making it look good. What we need to do is add actual lights to this scene. Now, how do we do that? Just like we have a merge here in our regular nodes, there's something called a 3D merge. And what that does is just put multiple 3D things into the same world. So we can grab this icon right here, merge 3D. With my text 3D selected, I can just click this actually. Let's see what happens. If I click it, bloop, it adds a merge 3D here. And nothing's really different up here yet because we still haven't added lights, but we've kind of got it set up here. And actually, if I take our merge 3D and hit one on the keyboard, we can kind of spin it around and see that this is 3D, it's just not shaded. Like I said, this merge 3D kind of adds a 3D scene that you can add multiple things to. So let's add a light. The default icon down here that's a light would be a spotlight. I think that's probably like the hardest 3D light to use. So like I never use spotlight, 
but I, I bet some people really like it. I'm gonna just double click off of everything and hit shift spacebar. That's gonna bring up our select tool panel here and I'll type light. And here we can see our 3D lights as well as some other stuff that says light. But I'm gonna pick directional light because this is just a lot easier to control. And we'll hit add. And let's take the output of our directional light and pipe it into our merge 3D. And look what happens. Magic happens, friends, magic. So this is starting to look somewhat decent. The problem is that we're shooting this light directly at the surface. So really what we're doing is almost lighting it in 2D because none of the light gets to the other faces. It's just on these front faces of this word. So we can fix this by having our directional light selected and going here to the inspector to transform and messing with these rotation controls. Because if we shoot this light at a different angle, it's gonna light up different faces and it's gonna actually look 3D. So let's grab this Y axis and we'll just push this around and you see what we're doing here? You see how it's starting to look 3D? That's cool. And maybe we'll also rotate this on the X axis so it kind of comes from above and we can play around with different kinds of shading and everything here. We basically play around with it until it looks nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's good for now. It'll at least show us the shape of these letters. And let's kind of set up our words to actually look the way that we want. In a previous tutorial, I made this say some show. So let's just do that. Down here with this text 3D, we're gonna make sure this looks nice actually. So I'll select this and this is gonna be some. And our color, let's pick kind of a pink. I like this kind of pink looking color. That looks good. And one thing is I feel like the edges of this just look too sharp. So we can actually bevel these edges if we scroll down to extrusion. There's a couple of controls called bevel depth and bevel width, and we can start to push those up a little bit, both of those up, and we'll start to see that it adds sort of a rounded corner to these words, which always looks nicer in my opinion. Just make those pretty beveled, dial it into taste. We could even save some processing power by clicking off bevel back, because we're not really ever gonna see that. And that's looking pretty nice, right? And now let's take this text, we're going to select this and hit F2 to rename. We'll say sum underscore 3DT for 3D text. And I'll hit control C and double click off of this so that nothing's selected and hit control V. And this one's going to be show sum show underscore 3DT. I put the underscore just so we always remember what it is. So underscore 3DT is 3D text. However, you can remember that is good. And we'll take the output here and pipe it into merge 3D. And now we just have to go up and change some to show and let's make the color almost white let's do kind of a bluish white and take the brightness down a little bit something like that maybe hit okay and now we're stuck in a video game uh, oh God. what are we doing these are just trying to occupy the same space and has no idea how to actually show that so what we can do in our merge 3d is just grab this one and bring it down here with our little widget and that's nice right cool some show but we're getting to the point here where this text is filling up too much of the screen. So we could push both of these pieces of text back. There'd be nothing wrong with doing that, but we're going to animate and kind of do some stuff anyway. So I think what I'll do is add a 3D camera. One way to do that is just grab it from the toolbar here, camera 3D, just drag that down to the flow and take the output and pipe it into the merge 3D. What this will do by default is start looking through this camera 3D when it renders render 3D. Render looks for a camera here that's attached somewhere along the line. So we'll take this camera 3D, and if we look at our merge 3D here over on the left, we don't see anything here because our camera is actually behind our text and it's just shooting out into nothing. So what we gotta do is take our camera, I'll just grab it on the Z axis and push it back like this, and look what happens. Oh, baby. Pulling this back so we can actually see stuff. Yeah, have it right there for now. What I like to do generally is set the camera where it's going to end up, and then we'll animate stuff in a minute, but we want it to end up somewhere along these lines, and I'll even push it down just a little. So there we go. One thing I wanna do is rotate these 3D texts because it's just a little bit boring right now is all. So let's go to our inspector here, and under this fifth little tab, the one that says transform but has the arrows, it's confusing, isn't it? That's fun. This fifth one that has the arrows, we can rotate this on the Y axis and add a little character to this. So we'll maybe rotate this like this, select show and rotate this one the other way. And we just kind of make this a little more interesting. Maybe I'll take this text size, bring it down. We can even adjust this in 3D space to be maybe a little closer, maybe bring it forward a little bit. Maybe we won't rotate this quite as much and click this little icon over here in the upper left hand corner to give us a widget and kind of move around that way. Now we have these kind of stacked up like this, and that's looking pretty good here. 
Now that we've messed with stuff, let's change our directional light a little bit and make sure that that is doing everything that we want it to do. Again, we can probably play with it like this. We want that to be nice and bright, maybe something along those lines. Just play it with all the rotation just to get it looking how you want. That looks pretty nice, I'd say. In fact, one thing I might want to do, just to give this 3D text a little bit more 3D-ness, I'll select one of our text things, show, and in our inspector, let's go all the way down to the bottom. And here where it says extrusion depth, let's make this even more. Let's extrude this a lot. Let's do like 0.6. There we go. Then these words have a little bit more depth. You see the difference? Let's actually change the shading of this viewport. If you up here where it has this circle, you can twirl this down and say like lights. So we can actually see what's going on a little better. Then let's also make this one a little bit thicker. Let's go over here to extrusion depth under text. Again, 0.6. Mess with our light a little more. And you just kind of got to tweak it until it looks right. Also grab this light here in our Merge 3D and bring it out just so we can see it a little better. The directional light doesn't really matter where you put it in 3D space. I like to just put it where I would put a real light, you know, so that I kind of know just by looking at this, like, oh, this is the key light, you know, this is the main light. We'll turn this just so it isn't flipping all the time. There, that looks pretty nice. And I think what we'll do, um, let's rename this. Let's call it key light. Let's duplicate this. I'll hit control C, double click off and hit control V. This is gonna be kind of our rim light. Let's grab this and put this into Merge 3D. And this is gonna start out by just making it really bright, but we're gonna change the rotation of this and just light this from a different angle so that we can kind of pop the edges of this 3D a little bit. So we'll just rotate this so it's like, if you look here in our 3D port, we have a light basically coming from behind just about and shining down here from behind the words. And this is just how you would light something in real life too is it's nice to have a key light and a backlight to kind of give that nice little edge highlight on stuff. And so now if we turn this off and on, we'll see the difference that makes. It's a really big difference. That just, it turns it from, yeah, it's pretty, it's all right. You know, it's okay, it's all right, to like, oh dang, that's some tasty words. Those are tasty words. Let's grab this top word and maybe we'll push it up a little bit because it's kind of getting rowdy. Getting a little rowdy, I'd say. All right. So this is looking pretty good. The last thing that I want to do is animate this a little bit. One way that we can animate this is with the rotation of the words. So let's say within about a second or so, let's just pick 30 frames ish. It's going to end up here. So let's grab our sum text and go to 3D transform here. And I think what I want to animate is the X rotation. So that's like up and down rotation, right? So let's set a keyframe right there at frame 30. Same thing for show. And then at the beginning of this, let's bring it back to zero. We're just going to offset some of this a little bit. So we'll tilt this down just a little bit. And this upper text, we'll tilt it up just a little bit so that it over time kind of comes together like that. It's subtle, but subtle's good. There you go. That looks nice. We're also going to animate our camera. So let's select our camera right here, go up to the inspector, transform. And again, maybe we'll have this end at about frame 30. You can pick whatever frame you want. And this time we're going to animate the translation in Z because I want this camera to kind of dolly out. So let's keyframe that Z. And at the beginning of our comp, we'll have the camera pushed back like this. And so really what it looks like is the text is coming towards you because you don't really have any reference point like that. And I think that looks pretty cool. One thing I might do is change the camera controls a little bit because I like to have sort of a wide angle on stuff like this. So this angle of view here, we can push this down a little bit and give a little bit more lens distortion, something like that. Maybe switch this to like 9.3. And this time we'll, we'll stop like here. And then at the beginning of our comp, we'll actually be way back, way back. So now this will come. Yeah. We'll actually have this maybe bounce a little bit. So like frame 20 will be really close. And then frame 30, we'll back off a little bit, keep it tasteful. So now we have this coming in. It gets really big and then kind of bounces back. The general motion is pretty good. We need to smooth out those keyframes though, because it looks janky. So easiest way to do that is with the spline panel up here and click on spline. And this is just a graph of everything that's animated. Let's just checkbox everything that's animated here. And we're going to select everything, just box select everything and hit F on the keyboard for flatten. And that's going to flatten out all of these handles, which basically means that everything's going to be smooth. So check this out. There we go. 
So now we have this kind of cartoony zoom. I think that looks sick. Some show. Yeah, some kind of show. And that's the idea. You could even do stuff like animate the Z rotation on the camera and have it tilt everything, right? Of course, we'll want to make sure that we soften that as well. Select all those keyframes and hit F. There's our schmancy title, some show. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, if you stayed to the end, make sure to give me a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. And if you want more fusion tutorials, well, we got a bunch right here. Check them out. And then you too can make some show. <laughs> you can replace this text, man, with whatever you want. Uncle Jebediah or David's show <laughs> or some David, you, you know, your heart is a blimp. Let it fly.